Well, what do you make of what happened with the lira and how far it went down after this this move by, well, the the, the country's president uh, Recep Tayyip Erdogan? Good morning. Yeah. So um, I know that the move is really outsized, but we have to keep in mind that it happened at the time when liquidity was very low. Thus, the impact on the broad dollar um, index has really um, stabilized now that Asia is online. Um, having said that, as far as its impact on Asian assets are concerned, historically, Asia is, uh, has a relatively low sensitivity with regards to any market moves in Turkey, unless, of course, there is a sustained and um, substantial impact on broad DXY. Yeah, exactly. And uh, let's go to the dollar and uh, talk a little bit about uh, how the yield story and how yields have been ticking up. And uh, at, at what point do we see a trickle turn into a flood, which uh, perhaps uh, throws a lot of people's forecasts for a weak dollar this year, those forecasts into the bin? So, so far, we're not yet ready to um, abandon our bear dollar theme just yet. Although we have seen, um, we have... Um, recently revised our 10-year yield forecast for the U.S. to 2% this year, coming from the initial forecast of 1.7. Um, markets are basically pricing in less, or uh, they basically pulled out some of the pricing of an early Fed hike. But the continued improvement in economic momentum in the U.S. is just um, consistent with the continued rise in the long-end yields. However, Although we expect a 2% for the 10 year by the end of the year, it is very possible that you can have an overshoot in the short term, and then that would op open up to a downward correction later in the year. Uh, Eugenia, you're looking at uh, a weaker dollar, uh, your bad dollar. What does it mean for dollar yen going forward? So um, the dollar yen at this point, um, even with the BOJ policy um, last week, at the end of the day, the dollar yen is very much dependent on the comfort of the U.S. Fed um, with regards to the um, rising U.S. yields. So at this point, if the, do if the U.S. yields are... Um, the risks are tilted to the upside, then dollar yen could continue to go up, maybe even um, breaching 110. However, once the dollar yields um, have um, overshot the 2% and we have a correction, then dollar yen could go down. Thus, our year end forecast for the yen remains at 104. Uh, Eugenia, how closely are you watching central banks? Because there seems to be a divergence now among central banks around the world. We know that the Fed is intending to stand pat, but we've seen Russia, Turkey raising rates. Norway has indicated it will raise rates at the second, in the second half of this year. What do you make of this divergence? So it really depends on the domestic issues um, that are prevailing at the moment. But of course, the upside risks in the in the U.S. Um, yield structure is also um, having an impact on, on the other central banks. As far as Asia is concerned, so far we have seen a muted response at at least as far as the Asian currencies um, are concerned. But instead, it is the Asian yields that have moved in line with the U.S. yields. So some, some markets are now pricing in hikes um, in local yields, even though domestic demand is still very much lower than the pre-pandemic levels. All right. Well, looking at all this, uh, Irene, you know, you, you see what's uh, been happening in the Bank of Japan. We've been looking at, uh, uh, generally speaking, at this whole policy of yield management, yield curve control, and uh, you know, the, the big statement that they came out, came out with on Friday was uh, quite. A, there was quite a lot to digest there. What did you make of it? So, as far as BOJ is concerned, they a marginal widening of the target range of the ten-year yield curve is still 
um, maintaining the yield curve control framework. So um, widening goes both ways. It can go up by five basis points more than the initial um, target range, but it can also go down five basis points. So that means if the if the conditions deteriorate, then the yields can go into deeper negative territory. So at this point, it's really a Fed call rather than a BOJ because the changes of the BOJ have really just been to allow for more flexibility, but not an abandonment of current policy.